going on, everybody? Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So the stock market crushed it today, guys. S&P 500 up 1.6%. The Dow Jones and the NASDAQ went up 1.5% as the Russell 2000 beat them all up almost 2% on the day and in this video we're going to be talking more about the stock market breaking down some technicals going over a bunch of stocks that i'm looking to buy right now and i want to share with you guys what i've been doing in the stock market an earnings report here from best buy and in general where my head is at overall as a trader and as an investor so make sure to hit that like button for me subscribe to the channel and by the way this video is sponsored by flexi spot and we'll get into that later on in the video so s p 500 again went up 57 points on the day up over 1.6 percent and we broke a very key level that we've been talking about in the past couple of videos notice here on the hourly chart S&P 500 has been struggling under 3585 for the past one, two, and three trading days, right? And what did we talk about yesterday? We mentioned how this was potentially a head and shoulder forming, which wouldn't be so great for the, for the bulls, right? We can see here left shoulder, head, right? And the right shoulder was forming under the neckline of 3585. But now that we gapped above the neckline at 3585, we filled the gap all the way up to 3630. The head and shoulder is out the window, right? We're scrapping that theory because it didn't play out. If it did play out, the S&P 500 would have tanked and gone under 3545 and if it broke there and filled the gap down to 3515 that is where the head and shoulder the right shoulder would have completed and the H and S head and shoulder pattern would have played out but now that we broke 3585 we filled the gap up to last week's highs which were around 3625 3630 and we actually closed above that level, guys. You can see here at 36.35, we held above it on the intraday chart. Take a look here. We pretty much rose all morning. We took out 36.25, no problem. And if I extend this to the right, you guys can see, and if I pull back on the hourly chart, you can see how strongly the S&P for the rest of the day it held that old resistance from last week, right, from the 13th of November up until the 18th of November. You can see how it held that old resistance as a new support. So this is looking very bullish. We went from almost a bearish pattern, head and shoulder, to now we're breaking out again. The bulls are gaining that momentum, and especially with that bullish close above 36.25. Now, at this point, I truly believe the S&P 500 is going to be gunning for 36 45 whether it's tomorrow at some point later this week again the markets are closed on thursday for thanksgiving and we have a short day on friday so maybe it happens tomorrow maybe it happens on friday or maybe it happens next week but i think overall we're going to get out of 36.45. We're going to break that all-time high. That is what the technicals are telling me. They are looking very, very bullish, right? So watch 36.45 as resistance here and 36.25 as support. We're in this little 20-point gap, 20-point window right now, and that's going to tell us, okay, what direction are we picking, right? Whether we break 36.25 on the bottom side or we take out 36.45 on the top side. And when it comes down to the SPY ETF, which is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500, right? If I extend this to the right, you guys can see, actually, what did I just do? Let me actually do that again. Extend this to the right. You guys can see we took out last week's highs at 363 and we actually held them as support and now we're popping into the close and after hours. You guys can see here on the intraday chart that is happening. We saw a nice pop after hours almost into 364. So what that's telling me is momentum is shifting right back into the bulls favor in the short term and we might be going up to the all-time high which is 363 dollars here on spy if i extend this to the right 
You guys can see that. That is the gap we're in. That is the window we're currently in from 364-ish, 363 to about 366. 367. And I, and I think, honestly, again, like the S&P index, SPY, which tracks the S&P, it's likely to fill and break all-time highs, whether it's tomorrow, this week, next week. I think it's coming, guys, and I'm sure you will agree. And let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. So those are some levels to watch out for on SPY and SPX. And when it comes down to the Dow Jones, would you look at that, guys? The milestone was reached. 30,046 was the close today, up over 450, up 1.5% on the day. And the second we broke that neckline at 29,700, we gapped out of that left shoulder that was potentially forming in the head and shoulder. The second we gapped out of that, we scrapped the head and shoulder pattern, and now we're breaking out clearly, right? The Dow Jones again hit 30,000 points today. It actually cracked over 30,100. And if you guys take a look here on the intraday chart, we've been cruising all day on the Dow Jones and the markets in general. So what are we going to do now? Well, if you take a look here on the hourly chart, if I extend this little trend line to the right, you can see now we're holding 29,950, 30-ish thousand points as a new support. That was old resistance from last week. So as long as the bulls hold 30K and the momentum continues to seem like it's going to continue to move up, I think we're going higher here. But the second we break 30,000 support, we might be going down maybe 29,700. That's right where the left shoulder was trying to form. Well, it did form. And the right shoulder up until today when we broke out. Um, it's right around 29,700. So that could be where we go down if we fill the gap down. But as long as we're over 30,000, I think there's upwards momentum here on the Dow Jones. And the NASDAQ 100 broke a resistance as well. So it's a, it's a slam it's a slam dunk type of day in the markets today, guys. NASDAQ 100 broke out of 12,045, 12,050. We struggled there last week, pretty much all of last week right from the 11th actually no the 16th 13th 16th of this month up until the 19th 20th of the month and now that we broke 12,050 I think there's likelihood there's a high likelihood we get up to 12,180 to 12,200 that is the next big resistance here on the NASDAQ 100 which is the high from back in the beginning of November and back in the middle of October. And you guys know, I'll say it again for all the new viewers out there, I think that once this breaks 12200, momentum is going to push us straight up to that all-time high at about 12400, which could give the Nasdaq 100 from where it is right now up to 12400, about 2.8 to 3% more upside. So overall, guys, those are some thoughts on the market. And when it comes to the Russell 2000, it's on a straight breakout tear. I mean, it needs a pull down, in my honest opinion. We hit an all-time high today at 1862. And based on this trend on the four-hour chart for the Russell, and if you guys didn't know, this tracks more of the smaller cap companies. Based on this trend I'm seeing here on the four-hour, I could easily see the Russell take maybe not a hit all the way down to maybe 1,600, but maybe to the 50 SMA at about 1,680, maybe 1,700. That could be where we see a healthy pull down. And if the 50 SMA breaks, that is where we might be going down to 1,600, maybe a bit under that to meet the 180 SMA. And like I say all the time, guys, it's great to see a ton of green in the market, green day after green day after green day, but... It's great to see healthy pull downs as well. And in my opinion, the Russell 2000, especially the Russell 2000 out of all the indexes here, is in need of a pull down. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I would love to know. Also, if you guys are enjoying the video, hit that like button for me. And let's talk about what I personally did today. And let me tell you guys, I wasn't expecting to do this today, but... I locked in a little bit of profit on Alibaba. And let me explain. Ticker symbol BA, BA. I locked in half of my position here today. And it's kind of like, I don't want to say it's a gut feeling that the markets are going to crash, but it's not that at all, honestly. But what it is, is 
I kind of just wanted to lock in a profit here before the long weekend, before the holiday weekend, just to play it safe. Again, I'm not saying we're going to crash, but like I say all the time, you never go, uh, go broke locking in profits. And we ran up so much today approaching that 283, 284, 282 level of resistance, which I talked about yesterday as being one of my targets to sell right around 284 and then 295, 300. So I figured, okay, we filled the gap pretty much all the way, almost to 285. I was in from yesterday at 269.35. I made a quick little 1011 per share there, dollars per share, and I figured to lock in the profits. And I did exactly that on half of my position today, literally at the end of the market. There was five minutes left, something like that. I got out at 290, or not 290, 279.8. So I went from 269 to 279, about $10, $10, $11 in profit in literally one day. And again, it's just to play it safe to lock in profits of about 3.4%. And nobody's ever gone broke locking profits. And this is one that I still want to hold. I still think it can get to 295, 300. And I'll monitor my position from here. And maybe I'll add more to it if we do burst out of 285 and get more momentum. But at this point, I'm just being careful. We are a bit overextended on the RSI, and I'm fully aware, hey, we might end up selling off a bit, maybe back to the mid-270s tomorrow, and maybe I buy back in. We'll see how it ends up going down, but I ended up locking in half of my profits there, or half of my position, rather, in Alibaba, and that's pretty much all I did today, guys. Yesterday, I locked in half of Workhorse, and I'm still in Workhorse, right? And speaking of this, guys, take a look at the drop this morning. This is what I'm talking about, where it's good to lock in profits, especially if you think a stock is getting a little bit oversold, which Workhorse definitely was, which is why I locked in profits yesterday. Take a look at this sell-off. We got to $30 pre-market, and then when the market opened, this thing collapsed. It went down fast. And if you guys were watching Workhorse, you know what I'm talking about. This thing dropped in a second. It went from 29 to 28 to 27 and got all the way down to the, uh, to to 24.30 here, which is a drop of over 17, 18 percent. That's unbelievable. Almost 18 percent, over 18 percent from pre-market $30 to where it was at about what 9:50 a.m. 20, 30, 40 minutes after it hit about $30, it dropped 20%. That is the type of stock that Workhorse is, and again, that is why I like locking in profits and playing it safe in scenarios like this. But now that we can see how it played out, it ended up rallying for the rest of the day. So there was money to be made here if you guys did end up buying uh, this little dip here because we rallied all the way from 25 back up to 28, closed at about 28.80. So bulls are still in charge overall when it comes to workhorse. 50 SMA is holding here on the hourly chart, and I'm personally still holding half of my position at about $22 per share. And Apple's another one I'm in at $112, up 1.6% today, or 1.16% rather. Still holding on to Apple. I have a, a sell target in the higher 120, so I don't plan on selling this anytime soon. SLV, the silver market, the gold market got crushed today, guys, but I'm still holding on tight to SLV, which is one of my hedge positions, right? Because I really like precious metals. That's something Thing that I believe in. A lot of people don't. A lot of people say, oh, you don't need that stuff. It doesn't spit off cash flow. It doesn't do anything for you. But for me, guys, I think precious metals have a place in people's portfolios and they're good for hedging. And for me, again, I own silver SLV here and I actually own physical gold, which I showed on my Instagram a couple, what was it, like a week ago? If you guys saw that, you probably saw that. So I'm in SLV, down a little bit on this position, and at about $23. And EA is by far my worst holding right now. I'm in at about $132, down about $12 per share here. And I'm still holding on. I still have hopes in this um, longer term. Again, this was a longer term swing trade for me. I still have hopes for it. I'm not just selling out 
Um, if anything, I might average into the breakout momentum once we get it, if we get it, right? Nothing is guaranteed, but I think once uh, 125 can break, I think EA could be off to the races, back up to the mid-130s, back into the 140s, and that's where I'd probably add to it, maybe 125, 126. But at this point, I'm still holding onto my initial position with cash on the sidelines, waiting to maybe add more to it, and we'll see how it ends up going down. So overall, that is what I personally did today, guys. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys did, and let's quickly talk about an earnings report here from Best Buy before we get into the Flexi Spot sponsorship. Best Buy BB. Why? I told you guys yesterday to watch out for this. They reported earnings today, $2.06 versus $1.70 estimated. Revenue came in at $11.85 billion versus $11 billion estimated. So a double beat there. And same store sales came in at 23% growth year over year. And somehow the stock went down 7%, down about $8.00. And 50 cents. And overall, what we are seeing is that Best Buy is holding the 180 SMA here on the four hour chart at a potential higher low, right? Let me show you guys what I'm seeing. So take a look, right? We're holding 116, actually, no, 113 rather, at a higher low on the 180 SMA. And we're seeing a big triple top resistance at about 123. So this is looking like an ascending triangle, kind of, right? Other than that one breakout to 127, I mean, we've been struggling at 123. So it seems like Best Buy wants to make higher lows and higher highs into that resistance at 123. So we're squeezing into it. And eventually, I think if the ascending triangle plays out, this could bust right through 123 and maybe get back to 128. So just because they're down 7% today on a pretty good earnings report, which sometimes happens, guys, you know, I'm not just scrapping the stock. I'm actually looking at it even further now. And if we do hold 115, I think this could be an entry up to about 120, 123. And if 123 breaks, I think the stock could be off to the races. And again, don't just buy anything, trade anything, because I'm talking about it. Always do your own due diligence. But overall, Best Buy looks like it can be a play over these next couple of days. And I've been getting a bunch of questions over the past couple of months. It's probably been over the past couple of years at this point since I've started my YouTube channel. Stas, what is your setup like? What do you have? Do you have 15 computer monitors? Do you have a little desk? Do you trade on your bed? Do you trade in your bathroom, right? No, that's a joke, guys. I don't trade in my bed. Well, maybe sometimes I do. But I've been getting this question a lot. So let me show you guys my setup on this new FlexiSpot desk that I got a couple weeks ago that I'm absolutely loving. So cue the video. Alrighty guys, so here's my trading setup and again, shout out to FlexiSpot for sending me this desk and for sponsoring this video and what you guys are looking at is the Vici Electric Quick Install Height Adjustable EC9 Series Desk. It stands at 48.4 inches tall, fully lifted and let me tell you guys, it is so easy to set up. Took me about 10 minutes. All you have to do is bolt the two legs into the base, which is a rectangle, 48 by 24 inches. You plug it in and you're ready to go. And I've never appreciated standing up and working until I got this desk from FlexiSpot. I've had it for three weeks and I really love it. And if you guys do want to work sitting down, which I like doing sometimes too, you can lower it to a height of 28.7 inches and it's awesome. So check out the link down below. It really completed my personal trading setup. So check out the link if you guys do want to pick up a desk from FlexiSpot and let's get back into the video. All right, guys. So now that you saw the FlexiSpot sponsorship, again, shout out to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video and for sending me this awesome, awesome desk here. I'm absolutely loving it. Let's talk about the top stocks that I'm looking to buy right now. Starting off with PLTR, also known as Palantir. And let me tell you guys, this thing has been on an absolute tear. Ever since they IPO'd through a direct listing, I believe, at about $10.00. They've been coasting higher and higher, hit a low at about $8, and then absolutely exploded 
ever since that point. I mean, take a look here on the 20-day, one-hour chart. And we actually we actually covered their earnings a couple of videos ago when they were just $14 per share. Fast forward a week, 10 days, they're at $24 per share. Yesterday, they went up about 15%, and today they went up over 13%. So, like I said yesterday, I'll say it again, there's a lot of momentum in this stock. But the thing is, the tricky thing is, when can you enter this if it's always overbought, it seems like, because the momentum is pushing us higher and higher? Well, the truth is, you have to be very, very let's just say nimble with your entry points. You have to really look at the stock because it moves quick and you have to be aware of when it pulls down. I mean, take a look. Friday, we actually saw a mini pull down from 1950 to 18 bucks. It's it's not a massive pull down, but it's a decent sized pull down of about 6%. And it seems like every pull down gets bid up, gets bought up, and the stock goes higher. I mean, take a look yesterday. We gapped up immensely. We broke the highs from last week and the same thing happened today. So am I chasing the stock here? No. But back to what I said, you have to be nimble because this thing could pull down very quickly in the morning. And if it does pull down maybe to 21, 22, 21, 22, 50, who knows? Let's say it pulls down a little bit. That is what you guys have to be aware of as an entry point. Because again, every pull down that Palantir has seen, it's been bought up. The momentum has been pushed higher. I mean, take a look on the intraday chart. It literally happened today, and I missed the opportunity. But take a look. We hit 24, 27. We pulled down. We saw a mini pull down of about $2 per share, 8%. And then it got bid up. It got bought up, and the stock went higher, and we closed higher into the uh, or, we, or rather we went higher into the after hours session. So at this point, since we're at the all time high, I'm not chasing it. But any pull down that we get, I think could end up being a dip buy here on Palantir. And another one here is Nikola, guys. Ticker symbol NKLA. It went up 17 percent today. As most of the other electric vehicle stocks actually went down today, other than Tesla, which I think went up like 6 7%. But Nikola went up 17% today. And last week, I believe, we got news that they're actually reaching a deal with GM for GM to be the exclusive supplier of hydrate fuel cells globally for Nikola's Class 7x8 semi trucks, except in Europe. And we got that news originally last week. And we saw how much Nikola's stock price went up. Take a look here on the hourly chart. But later that day, we actually got word from GM that, no, 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 we haven't yet reached an agreement. But the stock actually didn't go down on that news. It actually kept on going up. And today it went up again 17% on more speculation, anticipation of this GM deal. And Honestly, guys, I've been on the channel before saying I'm not the biggest fan of Nikola. I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole, but you can't lie. There's momentum. This is a very great stock to trade, right? And I wouldn't marry the stock, right? I wouldn't get into it long term, and I don't really like marrying any stocks at that um, I think anything could go wrong with any stock that you need to get out of, but Nikola being a long-term investor, looking at Nikola, I wouldn't touch it. But the point is, in the short term, there's a lot of volatility. Up, down, up, down. And for traders, day traders, swing traders, there could be money made there. So for me, at this point, 17% up, it's a bit overbought. Our size at 81. But if we do see a pull down of some sorts, maybe down to the low 30s, maybe $30, $30, $50, $31, maybe lower to actually no higher 20s maybe 28 29 that could be a dip buy here on Nikola for this momentum into the speculation of this GM deal and if things fall through who knows that could be bad for the stock in the short term which you guys have to be aware of when it comes down to Nikola but yeah watch it there's a lot of momentum here it could go higher I know it's crazy I think it can go higher on this speculation here. So yeah, watch that ticker symbol NKLA. Another one that we called out, was it yesterday, maybe the day before, is CCL went up 11.3% today. It filled the gap pretty much to where I said it's likely to do so if it broke 
19 to 18.30 to 19 dollars. I said, guys, take a look. CCL's been struggling at about 18.30, 19 bucks for months. Last time it broke that and ran all the way up to 21 dollars. And what do you know? It broke 19 bucks, 18.50, and it filled the gap pretty much all the way to 21 dollars. It actually sold off a bit, closed at about 20 dollars and 23 cents. And you could argue that yeah, it's a bit overbought now. It might not be the best time to get in. But if we get further news on a V shot, further news on cases going down, which would be great for the recovery stocks and CCLs a recovery stock. I think we could get out of $21 and maybe see a rally back to about $27. I think that's possible where it was at back in the beginning of June. So I'm keeping my eyes on CCL here. There is momentum, but on the flip side, if we get negative news about the V-Shot, if cases get worse, the cases for the you-know-what, then CCL could go lower. So be careful there with that one. Facebook is another one here, guys, which I'm liking here. Ticker symbol FB. It's under a big resistance at about 279, 280 bucks. It struggled there back in the beginning of August, back in the middle of October, heading into November. And now recently in the in the past couple of trading days, it's been struggling at 279. And what we're seeing is an uptrend, higher lows forming into the resistance, which is looking like an ascending triangle on Facebook. And I think if this can break 279, 280, there's momentum. I think there's momentum maybe back up to 300 at the peak. That could be a, a high target, a high price target. But under that, we could maybe get to 290, 295. So I think Facebook has potential to break out here. It was the best performing big tech stock today out of the bunch. They all were green. You know, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Netflix, Apple, and Amazon. But Facebook outpaced them by a pretty big margin today. And another one I'm watching is MasterCard, ticker symbol MA. MasterCard ended up breaking out of this downwards wedge. This is kind of a descending triangle. Um, you guys can see it broke out of there a couple of uh, trading days ago, filled the gap up to 345 and to 356. 355 sold off. We actually held the resistance of the wedge as support. Now we fill the gap back up to 345, which I think if it breaks, we might be able to make a move from 345 up to 355, which has happened multiple times in the past, right? Once here, twice here, and I think it can happen again. There's a potential for $10 of profit or about 3% from 255 to about, or rather 245 to about, or not 245, 345 to about 355. So that's MasterCard, and I think, honestly, it could get over 355. There could be even more momentum above this there, maybe to about 360, 365, which could give it about a 5 to 6% upside. And another one here is Virgin Galactic, ticker symbol SPCE. It's been doing very well, right? From 2250 up to about 24. Today we actually broke out, or was that yesterday? Uh, yeah, it was today. Pre-market, we broke into the mid-25s. We actually pulled down, and we held Friday's level of resistance as support. And now we're rallying into the close. We rallied into the close and into the after-hour session, almost at $25 per share now after hours. And what I'm personally seeing is the uptrend's continuing, guys. Take a look. 50 SMAs holding here on the hourly chart. But one thing to be mindful of and be careful about is, is we are seeing a bit of a bearish divergence. I mean, the RSI is starting to look, uh, you know, a bit toppy. It's it's starting to to make lower lows, lower highs. But the the stock itself is making higher highs and higher lows. So we're seeing the moves that the stock is making, higher highs, higher lows. They're actually a bit weaker. As we're seeing again, the RSI making lower lows, lower highs, and starting to at least. So that means the strength of the move is not as strong. So we might see a bit of weakness. It could end up breaking 2450, maybe going down to 2250. And I think 2250, that would be a nice dip buy here on Virgin Galactic. And big tech stock Amazon is another one that I'm like, wow, it's down about $400 per share from the all-time high at 3550. We're heading into the holiday season here which like I've said before, 
We don't know how the sales are going to be in this holiday season compared to other holiday seasons, right? If it's a drastic drop, that's not going to be great for Amazon. But then again, now that everybody is at home for the most part, most people are at home, a lot of people are going to be doing their shopping online for the holidays. And where are they going to go? Amazon, right? So that's going to be a bullish, potentially bullish fundamental catalyst there for Amazon. And if we get good news about the holiday sales, they're doing very well compared to other years and compared to estimates. I mean, I think Amazon stock could go over 3,300 back to 3,500. I think once it breaks 3,200 here, that's a big resistance. I think we could go much higher. So Amazon is definitely one worth watching here in the next couple of weeks as we're getting deeper and deeper into the holiday season. And Bitcoin, guys, GBTC, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, is a way to actually trade Bitcoin within the stock market. And this hit a high today of $24. It actually pulled down a bit here heading into the close let me take a look here and see on the intraday chart wow that's that's a pretty big pull down from 24 to 2230 that's a pull down of about 7.5 percent but despite the pull down the uptrend is still holding and if you guys saw bitcoin earlier i'm pulling up my coinbase app here bitcoin earlier was over 19,000. let me see what it is right now right now it's probably under 19,000. um let me double check here we go okay it's at 19,000. 100 but overall bitcoin is flirting with those highs from back in 2017 and for me guys i think gbtc is worth watching as there's a lot of momentum in bitcoin right now and neo is another one the last one here which went down about 3.3 percent today down about five dollars off of the all-time high at 58.81 and we saw the pull down, and now we're seeing consolidation at about $53, which could end up being a higher low. And you can see on this uh, hourly chart, we are holding the 50 SMA. So maybe we bounce off this higher low and end up seeing another rally back into the high 50s on NEO. I think that's very possible. And that is why I'm personally watching it here. So Overall, guys, that is it for this video. If you all enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, check out the Flexi Spot link down below to get yourself an awesome standing desk. If you guys want to support the channel and check it out, I would greatly appreciate that. Also, you can get four free stocks from Webull valued up to $1,600, and that runs out at the end of November. So deposit $100 and get your four free stocks linked down below. And that's it. I'll catch you all in the next video thanks for watching as always guys stay safe out there keep crushing the markets peace out